Now, this is the electron transport system. Do I want you to memorize this exact diagram? Not really, because I want you to be more concerned about what's the starting point in each of these steps. So what's the starting materials for glycolysis? What's the starting materials for the citric acid cycle? And what's the starting materials for the electron transport chain? I also know you want you to know the endpoint part. So this is what, how do you go into each process and what comes out of each process? Everything that happens in between, know as much as it helps you, but at the same time, like I'm not gonna ask you what exactly happens between these different complexes right here. Because I think that unless you're going to biochemistry or something very in involved in that research, it's not really that useful. It's, I mean, it's, I shouldn't say not useful, but practical for cl the clinic and your future jobs, not really, but it's like, this is what happens. So what we have here is NADH and FADH2. They're going to plug into the, uh, what, the electron transport chain. So they're now going to be finally cashed in. It's like taking all those cards and now you're finally converting it to actual cash. So what's happening is that now so that you know NADH is now becoming F NAD, FADH2 is becoming FADH and protons. So they're actually losing their protons, but they're also contributing electrons to this overall relay station of all these chemical or these proteins over here. So that's why it's the electron transport chain. It's actually taking the electrons from NADH and FADH2. And these protons, so electrons are going to go through these series of proteins. And as it goes through the series of proteins, the interesting thing is that the protons that they were carrying are going to be moved from the inside. So there are sublayers to the mitochondria. And your mitochondria, to refer to review, is one of the special organelles because it doesn't just have one plasma membrane, it actually has a double layer. So it's an outer membrane and inner membrane. So the innermost part of your mitochondria that's innermost to both membranes is called the mitochondrial matrix. So the myo so what happens with NADH and FADH2, is as that contributes its electrons, it also moves protons from the matrix into the space between the two membranes. And this is what we call the intermembrane space. So the interesting thing is that the intermembrane space is also one of the most acidic parts of the cell. Because again, protons are acid, they are pH. So this intermembrane space is very positively charged and very, very acidic. And this is also why we need the energy from the electrons because again, to build up stores of anything in your body, you need energy. So it's gonna build up all these protons up here. But what's gonna happen eventually is that as you build up more of these protons, if you open up a channel or open up a hole with all these proteins built up, where are they going to spill out? So they're going to spill out to the area with less protons, right? And that's what they do with this proton channel over here. But the cool thing about your mitochondria, as these protons spill out from the intermembrane space and back into the matrix, they are using the energy to drive the synthesis of ATP. So yeah, every time these protons spill out, they're going to drive the, the this is kind of like, a, if you've ever seen like a hydroelectric dam or a turbine or something, or a water wheel, that is using, as it, you have the movement of water, it's going to generate all this energy, but it's also going to convert into mechanical energy to generate electricity. So something similar is happening with ATP synthase. It's due to the buildup of all the protons in the intermembrane space and these protons spilling out into the matrix that's driving the synthesis of ATP. So yeah, that's what's happening here. So protons go build up in the intermembrane space as you put electrons through that all those different protein complexes. And as protons spill out from the intermembrane space back into the innermost matrix, then you're going to generate ATP. Now, where does the water come in in the products of the cellular respiration? Is that interesting thing? This is now where this is now where you're using up that oxygen. So the protons actually combine with oxygen and the electrons that were spent through the electron transport chain, and you make new water molecules. And I think even how many decades later, I'm remembering. 
I think the AP bio book, I should update to see whether it's really true, but I think there was a desert rodent called the kangaroo rat. And they say they generate, this is what we call metabolic water because they're not drinking water to get this water, but it's through metabolism that they're able and from what they eat and making energy and using the electron transport chain. This is how they're able to maintain water stores in their body because they're generating water through chemical reactions. And so I like to think of it this way. So here is like, okay, we don't have this system like this in Hawaii and it's probably going to be decades until we have a system like this. But okay, uh, not, not, without getting into politics, but this is the like way I like to think, think of it this way. Another analogy, some people get it, some people don't, but this is what I like to think about it. So what we have here is our NADH, and our NADH is not quite cash, it's not quite easily usable, but what does it contain? It contains energy, it contains electrons. So these electrons are going to provide power for these turnstiles, and these turnstiles are going to move protons from the matrix into the intermembrane space. So this is what the I think to NADH is like. It's like a swipe card and it has these electrons and it allows protons to move from the matrix into the intermembrane space. But so all these little protons are going off to work. But when they come back and as you build up more of these protons and they're going off into the intermembrane space, what happens when these protons come back home to the mitochondrial matrix? Well, now they're going to bring currency with them. They did their little job, and as they come back, now they get their payday. So now their payday is ATP, and this is what's happening. It's due to the protons, the movement of protons across the membranes of the mitochondria. This is what generates most of the ATP in your body through aerobic respiration. 